Welcome to Krista Paints a Masterpiece. This is episode five. Episode five. Oh, amazing. In England, in a comedy series, this would almost be a full series by now. We have one more episode to wrap everything up. I'm quite sad. Luckily, this is not that kind of thing. This is just a YouTube show. This is just a YouTube show where I get to do whatever I want. And today, what I want to do is paint a picture for you and particularly for a pair of fans who have put through the same request, which is very excellent. The two fans are... <gasps> Brrrr, is a very accurate drum roll. Brrrr, Pixie Caramel and Katrina Alcon. Yeah. <laughs> painting could be so fantastic, so amazing, so spectacular that two separate people have requested the same piece? That must be the question you're asking yourself. It's certainly the question I'm asking myself. Well, the picture is quite modern compared to some of the previous ones that I've done, which are from the 15th century and 14th century, but it's not super modern. We're not talking 1982, or 1972, or 1962, or 1952, or 1942, or 1932. The year is 1892. So quite a long time ago, but not that long ago. The artist is J.W. Waterhouse. What in the house? I'm sure that's the sort of thing that his friends said to him all the time. J.W. Waterhouse did a fantastic load of paintings, some of my favourite paintings of all time. If you ask me to say what is my favourite painting of all time, I will run away screaming because I cannot make that kind of decision. There's way too many paintings that I like. But he has produced some extremely fine paintings. Let's have a look. Mmm, oh, that's a beautiful one. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, and the colours of this one and this one. Mm, 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 mm. This particular painting that we're going to be doing today, there's none of those ones, this particular painting is in Australia. Quite a few of Waterhouse's paintings have ended up in Australia, so that's another clue, but it's still not this one. Oh, this one. He did a lot of paintings. Waterhouse was prolific. Okay, let's stop all this suspense. The painting that I will be doing today is... <gasps> Saucy Invidioso! Why am I doing witch hands? Well, Saucy was a witch! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we all think of with witches, right? Except when it's Luna Lovegood. Aww. She's so sweet. Actually, Cersei may have been less of a horrible, villainous, vindictive witch. And she might have just been a bit lonely. Oh, poor Cersei. She keeps trying to seduce men and they all keep rejecting her. So this particular painting, this is the top half of the painting, this particular painting depicts the moment where Circe has poisoned one of her rivals. Now it's not, it's not up here, let's go down, let's go down, 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 ha! What's that you're standing on there, Circe? What's that you're standing on? Looks like, looks like a sea monster. Is that a sea monster you're standing on there, Circe? What's going on? Is that a sea monster or is that the nymph Skylar? The nymph Skylar who Glaucus decided he liked more than you. Is that who that is? 
I think that is who that is. That's real sad. It is really sad. So anyway, we're going to have a go of this painting. I'm very excited about this because today, for the first time, I'm going to introduce some new colours to my palette. I mean, I say that making it seem like I've never used these colours before. I've definitely used these colours before. But I haven't used any of these colours in previous Krista Penta masterpieces. So let's have a look at the colours that I will be using. Palette, 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 palette. Palette! If you've watched any other episodes, you will have seen my palette before. There's quite a lot of empty, wasted space in my palette, but we're going to use some extra colours today. Oh, oh, so exciting! So in previous episodes I have used Quinacridone Gold, Pyro Red, Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. This week I will be using Phthalo Blue and Lemon Yellow and Permanent Rose and also Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. These two, I can't stretch my hand that far, these two, so that's the Ultramarine Blue and the Burnt Sienna. Just got some pen sienna on my thumb now. Yay! These two will be making all of my blacks and browns and really dark browns and really dark, dark, dark blues. But these two, boom! One, two, three. I will be doing all of the skin tones. And I will be doing all of the poisonous liquids in all of her clothing. Oh, it's going to be real hard. Next time I'm going to use finger painting. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe I should. Hmm. I will also be using tiny touches of gouache, as I always do. Um, this one, yellow ochre, and a little bit of white. I think that's pretty much it. I think I did use some burnt sienna as well. Uh, and then the rest, of, the rest of this is just flaky nonsense. So these are my brushes which I've talked about a few times. My rounds. Here look, oh doing professional. Oh. <laughs> I've got quite a lot of permanent rose uh, slash burnt sienna on my fingers so that's a really nice professional look. So oh yeah professional hands with effectively clown makeup on them. But all of my brushes, I've also mentioned, they're all synthetic brushes. I don't like natural hair wants. Do you know? Natural hair wants are made of actual pig hair sometimes and squirrels and stuff. It's messed up. It's messed up, you guys. I don't like it. My tubes of paint. You'll be familiar with my tubes of paint now. I've already mentioned the colours, so if you want to copy this, first I would say learn how to draw. Second I would say go back watch the video, find the colours. I didn't mention my paper. I haven't mentioned my paper in a while. So let's have a look at a piece of paper now. Make sure it's clean. Here we go. Boom. Oh, paper. This is Saunders Waterford. Cold press. Oh, smells like success. Actually, it doesn't. It just smells like paper. All right, let's hit it. Are you ready to go? Oh, I'm so ready to go. But are you ready to go? Oh, yes, I'm ready to go. But are you ready to go? Yeah, I think I'm ready to go. Ready. What are you? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's zoom in. I'm going in sideways. Going on upside down. And now we are here, and the cats are meowing at the door for me. He wants to come in, but I won't let him in. Ooh, okay, we've started. And I am doing a wet in wet wash to begin with. So, wicka 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 wet and wet wash. That's right, wet and wet wash is when you wet down the paper, and then you put a wet pigment into the wet paper. And what you get then is lovely soft edges. Um, this is also, I guess, me trying to try out the colours, work out what my base skin tone is going to be. And the skin tone, as I mentioned, is going to be a combination of phthalo blue 
and permanent rows and then in yellow but kind of work out what the ratios are trying to work out what the balance is and then I'm using a lot of that phthalo blue in her dress is it a dress I don't know it's only covering one boob hard to tell but her dress thing and now also putting some of that phthalo blue into her receptacle jug the bowl massive massive cocktail bowl yeah she's got some of those 1970s style little glass cups probably hanging off the edges of them when she's not she's not busy pouring poison into water and you can see the variation that you can get that's possible to get within just using that blue by adding more yellow to make it more green or allowing it to be that very strong sort of sapphire blue just by itself phthalo blue is a great color the only issue with phthalo blue is that it is a staining blue which means that once it goes down it's very hard to get off and what i'm putting into the background now this is all burnt sienna so for the very dark darks like her hair didn't mention what i was doing with her hair before her hair is ultramarine and burnt sienna to be a shortcut to black Technically, I could have made a black using just the, the three um, cool primaries, but decided not to. Why? Sheer laziness. But we're carrying on now, building up the tones into the fingers, onto the arm, and now into the face. This is what I like to do often as well. I like to put in the really dark accents once I've sort of got some mid-tones down, because once you've got the darkest darks on, you can then kind of assess how light or dark anything else needs to go. I spent quite a lot of time working on this pout that she's got going on. It's fantastic, but it's really a mm, very specific kind of mm, pout. And continuing to build up the tones. The challenge, uh, particularly with these three colors, is that they tend to swerve quite dramatically when you add even just a small amount of one of the colors. So. If you add a tiny bit of the phthalo blue, it will drag it quite swiftly. It'll drag your mix towards phthalo blue. Um, and the same applies to the two other colors. So getting them to balance is, is quite tricky. Still working on that pout. Mm, I'm trying to get those pouty lips. Pouty lips. And the really staring eyes. I'm a big fan of her very dramatic staring eyes. So you can see there's quite a lot of uh, putting pigment in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, which you've probably seen in some of my other videos. Um, but as I mentioned, the tricky part with this, because the phthalo blue is a staining blue, it is harder to remove. So you do have to be a little bit more careful about putting down that really heavy pigment. And I'm using the hair to kind of cut out the shape of her face as well, which is a technique you do in watercolors a lot, cutting out, cutting around things. And we're continuing to soften and refine the shape of the face, continue to build up that tone. It's, it's always an interesting thing, I think, the, the amount of tone, so how dark you need to go on a specific area, because if you look at the contrast between, say, her shoulder and her kind of decolletage area and her face, her face is actually quite dark, but then the jump from how dark in tone her face is compared to, say, her hair, which is even darker, or her eyes, her pupils, which are the darkest area, getting that sort of balance working out where it fits in between those things is very challenging. And the other difficulty with these three colors um, is that the lemon yellow is a little bit opaque a little bit opaque and so when you mix those three colors together trying to get a nice dark but also transparent kind of mid-tone very hard um, and in the finished painting of this I feel like around her hand particularly it has gotten a tiny bit muddy now working on the bowl I do get asked a lot about glass people wanting to paint glass paint glass or reflective, generally reflective objects. Um, and I think what's interesting about painting reflective objects, and I should definitely do, uh, do something that has more reflective objects or larger reflective objects at some stage, um, often the way that I describe it is that you're not painting the object, you're painting the way that the object is 
uh, warping or distorting the things around it or reflecting the things around it. So especially with a see-through object like this bowl, a lot of what you're painting is actually the things that are around it. Right at the beginning, especially towards the, the top of the bowl, that rim of the bowl, I was painting the background, I was painting the colours of the background in behind where the line of the water is. Now the water itself does have this tint, it's got this sort of greenish blue tint to it, but where it's concentrated mostly is kind of at the edges of the bowl, so as it goes around the corner. Um, and then also these darker accents that I'm putting in here, they're actually also a reflection of her dress, so of her clothes. And then underneath you can see there's sort of a slightly more uh, lighter greenish area. That's a reflection of her body or possibly um, the whatever it is, stalag stalactites that are around her. So all of this blue has to be the same blue that's in her clothes. And you can see I'm doing a combination of wet in wet and wet on dry techniques to try and get that watery look. It has been a dinsy little bit of gouache in a few places here as well, especially where the water is flowing over the rim to get that very high contrast kind of reflection on the top of the rim. I've put in a couple of little strokes of very bright white. Um, and now continuing to work on the fingers. This is what I was saying before about them getting a little bit muddy. It was hard to get the tonality right and it was hard to uh, get the colour, the chroma right as well. Chroma? The hue. All of it. All of it. It was hard getting the tone and the chroma and the hue correct. Um, and that's very much because, as I said, those colours really are very strong independently. And also when they dry, they tend to dry slightly differently as well. Uh, watercolour does always fade, um, but I think some of these stronger colours particularly tend to fade quite, quite dramatically. Now we're putting in some of the background and this this is always one of the things that I tend to do and you will have seen me do in other videos as well is is putting in that background towards the end um, and that's not just about having because she's so bright and light and wanting to preserve that light it's also because I want to make absolutely sure that I've got everything where I want it to be and I can actually cut around her then I can use that background to really shape her and now doing a bit more detailing on her quote unquote dress, robes, I don't know. I'm sure there's a word for it. There's, there's, a, there's a word for whatever this thing is, the Greek, Roman thing, it's a thing. Curtain, probably it. And this is a lot of the phthalo blue now. And so the phthalo blue going in nice and dark. I don't know if I said this in the introduction because to be honest, I did the introduction about a year ago. Um, but this colouring that's on her, rather than it being phthalo blue, it might have been or was more likely to be Prussian blue, probably. Um, because that's the colour that was more common around Waterhouse's era. And I'm just going in, putting in more depth of tone. Oh, it's upside down now. I often do this, especially uh, as I'm coming toward the end of a picture and that's just about being able to reach it from different angles so I've flipped the whole thing upside down. You wouldn't know necessarily from watching it but um, you can see the fact my head is coming from above. And this is very much the finishing touches. I'm not going to spend a heap of time working on that background. It's mostly just about highlighting her and, and making sure that she comes forwards and her skin has that kind of luminous quality to it. Which I think she does. She's looking very luminous. Very luminous. And very, very evil. Evil. She's so evil. Ah, I would like to do another Waterhouse picture. Because they're very beautiful. Very dramatic. Very dramatic! And if there's one thing I like, it's drama. And we're just finishing up. Final touches. Almost done. She's done.
the spell has been cast. The picture is finished. This is what my water pot looks like now. <laughs> the spell has been cast. The picture is fit. That is going absolutely everywhere. Ah, oh, it's all over my socks. Well, the picture is finished. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Stop singing that because I uh, don't want to risk copyright infringement. But there she is. Look at her. Oh, she's so spooky. So spooky. And eyes. The staring eyes. Why are you poisoning that nymph? Huh? Cersei? Why are you poisoning her? So unkind. So unkind. In terms of the technicalities of painting this picture, oh boy, it was a doozy. So I'm sure I'll talk about it a lot when I'm doing the montage breakdown of all the painting techniques. But uh, yeah, using entirely different colors is, is a bigger challenge than you might suspect. Um, but that said, it definitely needed those very, 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 very bright greens, which you could only really get with the phthalo blue. Phthalo blue has that really intense kind of sapphire look to it. So we will leave Circe back in ancient Greece all the way in a cave forever poisoning poor Skylar. It's a sad story. All right hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and like. Hi see what I did there? Flipped around and I will see you next time on the next Krista paints a masterpiece or supplemental one that I do in between. Woo! Oh, Sassy's dancing too now. Oh, we haven't been friends.